Welcome back. I think we're kind of rounding down to just a couple of, like, I honestly, two major projects on the shed and then maybe the total reveal. Woo! So we're gonna do a little bit of painting, a little bit of crafting, and a lot of making something super spooky. But we're gonna make a super cool spooky bookshelf today. So I bought this bookshelf from Amazon. It was like 60 bucks. It's pretty cheap as far as bookshelves go. Um, but it doesn't really match with the space yet. Uh, it sort of just seems very storagey and I want everything, every square inch of the shed to be themed and spooky. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna do a couple of things. Um, we're gonna add this. Doesn't look like anything. Okay, what it is, it's basically like a sticker you put on your door and it makes it look like a book case. So I'm gonna put this on the back of the bookcase to make my bookcase look like a bookcase. Anyway, so we're gonna paint some of our storage things to look like books. So we're just gonna basically draw out some books, paint them, probably change this. Bits and bobs, storagey display things can now be spooky. Let's get started. <laughs> Now that we've cleared everything off, we're going to apply the stickery thing. And I'm assuming this is a lot like the wallpaper that we put up. So again, it's just me sort of trying. step is to pick this little tab off the front because I want like a nice solid surface so we're just gonna go ahead and pull it off with like a seam rubber. So let's do it. Alright. So you're just gonna go ahead and Whoa. Can I call it a seam ripper or a seam ripper? It's a seam ripper, not a seam ripper. This is not Freddy Krueger. Ta-da! That aside for right now. All right, so now that I've got this done, I'm just gonna do it two more times. I had kind of an emergency take me away very suddenly yesterday, so I'm running a little behind, but it's okay. We're gonna paint today. It's gonna be very exciting and fun. Um, so our very first step is to prime the surfaces of our little canvases. I'm gonna use this chalk paint. The only reason why I'm using chalk paint is because I have it and I need to use it and I don't have a whole lot of it left. So either it's gonna die in the can or I just use it for something. It's gonna be kind of a lot today, so let's get priming. So we're going to paint the surfaces white first and we're mostly doing this so that the paint saturates the cloth and will fill in those holes so as we're painting we're not getting that texture that's the only reason why if you don't care about that at all or if your you know canvas is not like that then cool but this is just a step for me that i'm going to do because it just makes things easier So 
So now that uh, our surface is nice and primed, you can see how much of a difference all the white paint got into all the holes, kind of flattened out, you know, the surface of it. We're gonna start drawing in our little rectangles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little source image, just any sort of image, just sort of like the kind of books you want. In order to do this, I'm gonna take a little straight edge, give you literally anything. This is a broken, Little piece of wood that I have, <laughs> you know, Splinter City, and you know, a pencil or Sharpie, whatever. And we're just gonna kind of draw out our rectangles so that our that we just sort of can see how the books are gonna be laid out, and then that when we go back into paint, we know what paint goes where. So, all right, so anyway, we're gonna start. So, I usually have books always go to the edge, so, a little top. Put it just as straight as you can. Yeah. I mean, we're just having fun, so definitely perfection is not needed here. It's just making sure your rectangles are kind of parallel all the way down, because that's just how books are. If they are like a little bit, you know, too fat at the end and narrow at the top, I think that is like one of the easiest ways to have your eye be like, nope, that's not a book, that's not right. So it's like one of the easier things you can do just to kind of get that to work right off the top. In real life, you should have your books, you know, varied in height and in width. Now we have all of our books and you can see where I messed up and stuff. That's fine, whatever. And we're going to start painting. I'm gonna use just regular old acrylic paint. You see pods are killing me. It's like, as soon as I stop talking, they stop coming off the tree. But as soon as I start talking, they all come off the tree. That's it. So we're gonna just have one solid color and then we're gonna come back in with black and white. All right, and so for this first pass, we're looking for coverage and that's it. We're not doing any fancy painting. We're just trying to get all of the blocks one color. Just trying to make sure it's saturated. You know, we're gonna just try to stay in the lines. You know, but again, painting is forgiving. Now that we've got all of our rectangles painted, I mean, they look a little crazy right now. That's okay. The next step is to do our shading and our detail. So the very first thing we're gonna do is determine our light source. So the kind of the key to scenic painting in general is having a consistent light source because you're basically faking something so in reality, everything's gonna have a light source. So if you can see here on my face, this is shadow, this is light. Light's coming from this side. We wanna make sure that's consistent across all six of these boxes. Cause there's nothing that will alert your eye to something's weird faster than why is all the light sources from different angles. <laughs> this side is going to be the shadow and this side is going to be light. So light source will be coming from here going across. So it'll be light, shadow, light, shadow. So let's get going. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some painter's tape. We're gonna use this because we want the lines between the books to be very crisp because they are individual objects. Strong line here on the transition between the green and the brown. Right? And we just wanna push it down. And it's totally okay if some of the green is peeking out because the reality is I probably got a little messy when I painted this, that's totally fine. Painting is messy and painting is very forgiving. So the way we're gonna do this is we're going to lightly wet our brush, right? And then try to make sure that the bristles, I usually will reform them to make sure that they're nice and tight, sort of how they are right out of the packet. 
So we want harsh, very thin, harsh black edge right there. And I'm not even, all I'm doing is just sort of scooting, scooting that up and down. And you can see, because I'm scooting it back and forth, and because my brush initially is already a little wet, that it's already starting to transition. And now that we're kind of getting away from the line, I'm going to start making little circles, and all I'm doing is moving material. Yeah, all we're trying to do is just get a nice transition between the black edge into the brown, or into any of these colors. It's going to be the same for every single one. So, tiny amount of black. Scooting it and again. Every art class you'll ever take. Wrap your edges. Alright, and same sort of thing. We're gonna just take it very gently. I'm trying to make these rectangles look like they have dimensionality to them. Like at least in a very passing way. Put our little tape down. Right in there. That's okay. That's a little there, a little material there. And we're just going to circles until we get that nice, pretty C sort of structure. Now that I have all six of these done, I'm going to add in some little details. I'm gonna put some names on these books, add some little gold purdies, you know, make them a little more book-like. And then uh, once that's done, we are going to start organizing and decorating. So let's hurry up and get her done. Alrighty, so I think it looks pretty cool actually. Um, got everything painted, got some fun names on there, and now I think it's uh, time to reorganize. So let's uh, put everything away and get it all ready.
it's done, I think. I mean, well, done for right now. I'm not 100% done. I mean, you can see there are plenty of spines that don't have words yet. So I need to keep on hunting for some cool, creepy names for these books. It's going to be very exciting, but that's, you know, an ongoing process. It looks like a little library and it kind of, you know, hides the fact that this is all just storage. I mean, it looks like a scenic painting. I actually really like it. I think it looks really cool. And I just wanted a bookcase that was maybe a smidge on the spooky side and you know was very very functional and you can see up at the top got some things there now but it's probably going to change because again as projects happen i'm going to want to display them and you know so it's like just more space for display which is really cool because that means i'm going to do more projects so anyway uh, a little detail that i didn't film is i added some of this this is just like a flexible black border that i got off of amazon and I added it to these edges here. Added that small little like detail to make it a little more spooky, a little more ornate, and you know, a little more expensive-ish looking. You know, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching me paint a bunch of boxes. <laughs> and you know, the norm. <laughs> you enjoyed watching me paint boxes to look like books, go ahead and leave me a like. And if you wanna see more, um, goofy, spooky projects in the future, go ahead and subscribe, and I will see you guys around!